Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. In today's video, we are talking about fertilizing seedlings. So house plant people, I guess you start seeds too. That's like a new thing in the seed starting or in the house plant community. So stick around, you might learn something. Um, we're gonna be talking about fertilizing seedlings and uh, whether or not to do it, when to do it, how to do it, what to apply, and actually some ways that you can preemptively prevent things like blossom end rot because that actually happens a lot of the time in the seed starting stage oddly enough so let's just jump straight into it so we have a ton of plants here that i want to show you but first off i want to show you an example of what not to fertilize so this here is a wonderful this is a jalapeno pepper if you guys want it reusable not plastic not wood non-toxic technically fertilizing <laughs> aluminum fertilizing uh plant steak for marking your seedlings here you go this is it perma steak canadian company go grab them not affiliated but uh is a canadian owned family business so support them all you can this here is an example of a plant that you should not yet fertilize so this is a plant that has two cotyledons and no true leaf yet so this guy is not ready for the fertilizer action however these plants such as these brussels sprouts the celery this atomic bomb that's what that is see this is why you need to use the perma steak i planted these before i had the perma steak see smart these loofahs here with their first true leaves a majority of the pepper is actually in this packet. It's all time to actually fertilize. So what you're looking for is those first true leaves or for the monocot world, such as these bulbs here, um, you're looking just for more than one leaf. So you're looking for the second option that looks like this. So the best way to go about this is to dissect what family your plants are in. So if you have leeks, onions, Russell sprouts, cabbage, things of that nature, you are going to want to try to introduce sulfur, for example. And the best way to do that is actually chop top dressing with manure if you have it available to you, or finding an all purpose fertilizer that contains sulfur in it. So sometimes what will end up happening is the um, number code on the actual product will be NPKS. So if there's ever four numbers, the fourth number is always sulfur. And that is because that is what gives the majority of these plants kind of their little bit of taste to them. Now, if you don't have sulfur or you don't have access to that fertilizer, you just simply don't want to purchase extra fertilizer. What I've been using is just the Earth Medicines product. So this is manure, but uh, a much, nicer version of it it's not hydrophobic and i can actually just place it in the cells after germination has taken place i wait till after the plant germinates to add any sort of additional organics and all this is is it's actually dairy cow manure so it has sulfur in it and i just literally sprinkle it on top and then when i water it waters into the actual product so for anything in the brassica species family onions leeks um, garlic, if you're starting garlic from seed, I don't know anyone that does that really though. Um, just throw some of this on top, top dress with it and you will be a-okay. But again, wait till germination has happened and then you can add this. You don't even have to really wait until the first true leaves show up. You can just pop it into the system. So, Omnery certified as well. Very, very cool. Okay, so that's our brassicas, onions, garlics, that sort of thing. Another thing to keep in mind with the onion plants, if you don't follow me on Instagram, because a lot of you don't, I have like 4,000 Instagram subscribers. I'm a nothing on Instagram. You actually want to top your onions. So you kind of see how these are yellow. You're probably like, oh yeah, Ashley, you know what you're doing. You have yellow topped onions. It's because I am uh, constantly trimming them. So what this is doing is it's redirecting energy into the bulb formation. It's not redirecting energy into the leafy greens on top, which is not what we want. We want that energy put into the bulb itself. So I remove these and I cook with them. 
because they are totally edible. So you throw them on a salad, throw them in a sandwich, you know, put them on top of a steak. My dogs, I swear, every time I film, they just go crazy. That's my one dog yodeling. That's my oldest dog yodeling. He's a yodeler. Um, I'll do the same on this side. Now this side is actually struggling a little bit. So I, it's my coconut coir side. I literally am posting a video on the results of this. Not in love, but yeah, I just trim these back. I like to get them back to about approximately um, two inches in height. So nothing's perfect but two inches ish and yeah and like i said fully edible so i'm just gonna set that over there i'm actually eating steak tonight so i'm totally tossing those on my steak but yeah your onions are done so your next ones is things like peppers i haven't started tomatoes yet uh celery which i have here and then obviously herbs my basil's been doing like the funky dance lately i got like a wave basil, oh, that thyme smells wonderful. So yeah, these are all herbs. These are peppers. I planted way too many jalapenos in that one pod. That's crazy. Also, the loofahs here. So these guys, you can use an all-purpose. So I'm using um, Dirt and Grow still. By no means is it sponsored. I don't even have an affiliate link for this. Um, I just like this product actually. It's a Canadian company designed by a soul scientist in Manitoba, actually. And yeah, I really like this stuff. It works very, very nicely. I use it on my houseplants and I use it on my veggies. And this is my, is that my new bottle? I must, yeah, I must have ran out of my other one. So these are the ones that I'm using. There's also another all-purpose. There's the houseplant all-purpose one. I've just been using the all-purpose, this one, with it. So these are the products. I actually use all of them. <laughs> I know, it sounds weird. But I don't like to go for too much nitrogen in my seed starters. I like to actually focus more on potassium, phosphorus, and calcium. So I use more so these two than this one but I do use this one too so I like to fertilize in a sense that this will go in at about half strength of what's recommended on the bottle and then these two go in at full strength now you can't over fertilize with organic fertilizer I'm not gonna burn anything by over fertilizing with this the most that's gonna happen if I used too much of this is I'd end up with too much leafy green and it would be very floppy plants. They wouldn't have a robust nature to them, but these guys are pretty, I mean, they're, they've got a little bit of build to them. So if you are having issues with blossom end rot, fun fact, here in Canada and the US, the glaciers, when they ground up the surface or the bedrock, we actually ended up with a ton of calcium, ton of magnesium, and a ton of micronutrients in our soil. So when people say, oh, it's because you, you don't have enough magnesium or you don't have enough calcium, that is not true for the most part. It's actually likely caused by um, a lack of during the seed starting process because calcium and magnesium and a lot of these micronutrients that cause blossom and rock and cause issues are cumulative nutrients and if you watch the 17 essential nutrients plant miss that we did here at christmas where we went through all 17 essential nutrients you already know that it is a cumulative type of nutrient that needs to be provided to the plant from start to finish and peat moss or coconut coir regardless don't have a ton of calcium magnesium in them because they are technically soil less meaning they're not a ground glacier form they are literally from a peat bog or from the outside of a coconut shell so to counter this we actually use calciums magnesiums in the beginning stages of growth that is why i use this calme is it called calme calcium essentials is what it's called um so it has calcium uh, pot, they put potash, but that's potassium. Uh, phosphate, it's uh, pen, phosphate oxide actually, 
it's the same form of phosphate that comes out of vermiculite actually and then zero nitrogen which is nice because we don't end up with that excessive growth that we will see if we over fertilize with something like this and then i do use the potassium product combined with the FOSS. so this is a zero four and a zero zero six the reason for that is because these two here are going to force a ton of root development which is what i want for my seedlings i want not so much upper biomass and i really want to focus on the below ground what's going on below ground that's why i use these two products so and i just mix these up into a jug i'll leave them sit out and then i just quite honestly use it whenever i want one of my favorite ways to fertilize i'll just show you real quick so what i like to do is i like to take a cap on a bottle and just loosen it off a tiny bit and then tip it and it's like a dropper bottle. You can actually get, I was at Lee Valley today and they have some really nice ones over on Lee Valley. Um, but yeah, so all you do is just squeeze in your fertilizer water. Um, you can also bottom water if you wanted as well, but it's kind of up to you. When I just seed starting, like when it's just baby seeds, no roots yet um, and no like aggregation happening like uh, conglomerates within the product then that's when I will bottom water but once I'm at this stage I'll just top water because I do feel like I can control it just a little bit better but yeah if you guys just stick with that plan using something with lots of calcium potassium and phosphorus are your main ones and then just a tiny bit of nitrogen you will see really good results. You won't have these leggy, long, spindly, kind of uh, not tough, almost floppy type seedlings. You'll have ones that have some substance to them that can be roughed up a bit. And they're actually gonna transplant very, very nicely. And you're not gonna end up with blossom end rot down the road, but yeah. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite concoction is when it comes to fertilizing your seedlings. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.